Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you are all having a great day. This series is about analyzing the Yelp dataset. And since we will be looking at a dataset on food, the question of the day is, what is your favorite restaurant? Please comment below by typing QOTD colon and then the answer to your question. I'll go through the various steps necessary to analyze this data set while reading the comments as well as doing research on my own so that we can all learn together. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in similar content and would like to learn more. Follow me on social media for the latest updates. Without further ado, let us learn something epic. So the first step is to download the data set. We'll be looking at Yelp Academic Dataset, and the link will be posted below. We'll have these libraries to be imported, and I will talk about the libraries as we go through the code. After we download the data, we put the data in a directory or a location where we want to. And for me, I put the data in. a remote hard drive and have it right here. We'll use the exclamation point to run terminal commands and then ls to display the contents just to make sure that it's the data is where we expect it to be. And we see here we have the Yelp data set with a couple of JSON files and PDF information on the data. And we want to load the data we will need to have the path and we know the path is correct because we just use ls to display the files. And so I'll store that in the variable name path. Path is just a way for you to tell pandas where the data is when you load it. And pandas will be using it's a Python library used for data manipulation and analysis. We will use pandas to load the data and transform the data into a form that we can then feed into our learning algorithm. One step before we load the data is to look at how big the file is. And today we'll be looking at review.json. It's a file that contains a lot of reviews and metadata for each of the Yelp reviews. It's a 5 gig file, pretty big. I try to upload it altogether and I was not able to do anything with my computer it just kind of froze while it was loading. Uh, each of us we have different machines so maybe your machine is fine to load it but if your machine is not able to load the entire data set, fear not, there is a way to resolve this and that is to load parts of the data as opposed to loading the entire data set. So we will be using pandas to do so. And PD lets us know that we're using pandas. And read.json, since review is a JSON file, we will be using the read.json method. First, we put the path to the file that we're loading. And the path we set before, but this time, we want to specify which file it is, it is that we want to load and it is review.json, so we add that string. Lines equal true will allow us to read the file as a JSON object per line. And chunk size, this tells us the number after chunk size, how many lines we want to read at a time from the file. The way I came up with 100,000 was I started with 10. I loaded with read JSON. And then if it was fast enough, for my own opinion, I would try, I would scale it by a multiple of 10. So then I would try 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000 worked, but then I tried 1 million, but it was too slow in my opinion. So that's why I settled with 100,000. Another thing to keep note is if you're able to run this code pretty quickly, let's say I ran this on 1 million, it does not necessarily mean that your computer can load 
uh, a subset of 1 million data points because, well, I guess the because part, I don't know how to explain. But what uh, a good way to evaluate whether or not you are able to load the data is to use a for loop since after running this code, since we use chunk size, we will be given an iterator. And until you use the iterator, you don't know if you can load the chunk size amount. So right here, since it's an iterator, we will iterate through by using a for loop. And since this video, we are only doing a proof of concept, which means we just want to have multiple parts of this analysis. We just want it to see it work in the sense that there are no errors, but we are not in any ways concluding this project and saying we are getting the best results possible because there are a lot of things to fine tune and we will do so in each video in this series. So once we iterate, we'll store the first 100,000 data points in a variable called subset. And we'll break after that because there's no need for us to look at the other parts of the data since we're only doing proof of concept. Once we have the data set loaded, it's nice to look at how big the data set is. So we could do that with subset.shape. And we see the first, it tells you how many rows you have. And this tells you how many columns you have. Once you have that information, it's also nice to know what the column columns are, what the column names are. And it's also nice to know what the data types are. Because if we are going to do any manipulation or analysis, it would help if we were able to see that. So we can with subset d types. So right here we see the left. These are all of the the left column. It tells you all the column names that we have in our data. So we have business ID, whether or not the review is cool, dates when it was posted, whether or not it's funny, and more importantly, let's take a look at stars. We'll be looking at stars and text for our analysis. And we see stars, we have an in64, and text is an object. Now subset is a data frame. And a data frame is a two-dimensional structure where the columns may be of different types. And we can see here, OK, they're different types. You can think of a data frame like a spreadsheet or SQL table. So in our data frame, we'll have a column, each representing a variable, and each of the rows will be an observation. So in other words, each row is a Yelp review, and each column tells us something about that particular review. If we wanted to look more in detail what the rows provide, which each row review provides, we can by using subset.head. And the number within head just tells us how many lines of observations we want to see. And so we see, OK, we have a like unique ID here, and then the business ID, whether or not something's cool, dates, if it's funny, the review ID. Stars, number of stars for the review. We have the text, the actual review itself, how many people thought it was useful, and the user who posted the review. See, we get our 10 results, and uh, yeah, that's what subset head does. Now we have the data, but as I said before, when we use our learning algorithm, we only want the text and the stars. And we just need that, we just need the reviews, which has the text to train our machine and evaluate how well the machine has learned. And in Pandas, when we have a data frame, we can select all rows of a specific column by typing the name of the column in brackets. So as we see here, this X will represent all of the text data that we want. And our data frame is subset, and we saw before in the columns that we have text. So that's how we will pull all of the text 
And then we want all of the stars associated with each of the texts, so we'll also pull from stars. We can preview part of it to make sure that we actually have a text. OK, that looks good. And see that we actually have counts for stars. I guess we look at 10 11, 2. OK, so we looked all right. But between 1 and 5 makes sense because reviews are 1 through 5 on Yelp. That part looks good. Now for trading our machine, we will split the data into a training set and a testing set. The training set serves of the data serves the purpose to help our machine learn and generalize, and our testing set will be used to evaluate how well our machine has learned. To do this, we will use train test split. And so for train test split, we feed in our training data as well as y, which is our label. So our stars, number of stars are the labels because we'll be solving a classification classification problem where we are given a review and we want the algorithm to predict what rating that review will hold. Now for test size, what this does is it ensures that whatever subset we, we are getting 100,000 points, that 33% of those 100,000 points will be part of the test set to evaluate the algorithm and the rest will be for training. Random state 42 ensures that, well, since we we're both working on this code together, we're just ensuring that your results and my results will be the same so we can compare to see if there are any bugs or issues. And so when you output it, you have x, which is all the text for your training set and your test set. And you also have the labels for the training set and the test set as well. And then we'll do dot shape like before just to see the shapes of everything. You see 67,000, 33,000 makes sense because these two are for testing and we said before that it wanted to be, we wanted it to be 33%. Now one other step we have to do before we jump into the machine learning algorithm is that machines only can make computations with numbers. Right now our reviews are in text, so we must convert them to numeric representation. We will use Keras to do this. Now what we want to do is we have vocab size, which determines how many words from all the text that we will use. And so one vocab size of 1,000 means that we will use the top 1,000 words that appear in our text. After we use tokenizer and fit on text, and text to matrix, we will be able to have a matrix where one represents that the word exists in a particular review, and zero means that a word does not exist in a particular review. And we will need to do this both for the X train and our test data. So that's everything for today. Basically, to summarize, we were able to download a data set, load the data set, and transform our data set so that we are be ready to feed this into a machine learning algorithm in the next video. We're also able to learn a few things about how to view the data to make sure what we loaded was correct and to understand a little bit of what data types are in our data so we know what the potential ways we can manipulate our data and find patterns are. Next time, we will use our data that we have processed to do machine learning. Stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone, for your time. If you learned something and have fun, please like and subscribe and follow me on social media. Happy learning.